Wow, good morning, everybody. Or at least afternoon. Maybe evening, depending on where you're from. How's everybody doing? Switch up the screen as well. Go. Hey, Aloya! How do you do? I am doing good. How are you doing? Great to see you back. Samantha is back as well. Good afternoon. How are you both doing? Having a good day so far? Yeah, as for myself, uh, I've been doing good. I've been actually been chilling a little bit. Um, been doing some random admin stuff like before, before the stream. So not doing anything too exciting. I also didn't get to do that much between the streams as well. So the update between the streams is going to be pretty short this time around. Um, I did manage to do like a little bit of an update to the stone walls. Um, so I did a little bit of the texture and I set up like the the low polys again so that it becomes easier during the stream and we're gonna make all the other stone walls as well um yeah let's actually look at it in in the engine textures are definitely not final right but they're looking way better than the stuff that i had before um so yeah We'll see. We'll see how we'll how we'll get along today. My plan for today is to kind of finish this off to kind of have a set of like stone walls that that kind of look decent, right? And then maybe at a certain point we'll do like a little bit of polishing on them. Um, and then also maybe do a little bit of set dressing. I think we talked about that last time, where we we kind of wanted to do like a little bit, um, but we didn't really have the time for it. So I might do that this time around as well. So let's go, let's kick it off. Uh, yeah, as always, if you're new to this chat, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, maybe there's something, maybe there's something uh, that you see in my scene that you're wondering like, hey, how did you do that? Feel free to shout anything out as you come across of it. We can discuss it. Was checking since early on when the when the live starts. Doing good, thanks. I'm trying to figure out what the best way is to get good looking broken and weathered planks. The plank drama is never ending. <laughs> There's so many ways of achieving that, right? I think I think with broken planks, if you're thinking about like a lot of splinters and like a lot of um high high density detail, you'll probably have to look into making um like at least some opacity cards, right? Like some splinter cards or something like that, where you can really, where you can add them to the edges of any broken plank. Um, I don't really have like a broken plank example here, I think. But yeah, that's the way that I would do it. I would have like a little bit of geometry to indicate that the plank itself is broken and then like dress it up with like additional like opacity like meshes or like little little meshes that have like um broken splinters on them that's the way that i would do it first tried to use a graphics tablet for a stylized sculpt do you use it it's um ultra comfortable and cool yeah i have i have an xp pen like a 16 inch XP pen innovator um i've been having issues with it recently so i actually need to get in contact with customer service about it but yeah like when it comes to sculpting yeah oh and i also have like a like a smaller separate tablet like a, a microsoft surface um where i sometimes do drawing like i'll just do drawing or like very simple stuff or yeah stuff like that it's very very handy for sure.
Okay. To experiment with that. Yeah. It's that's probably the way that I would do it, right? Um the reason the reason why, why I would do it that way is because you can't really add like a lot of details purely with geometry, right? Um well, let me send out a reminder as well. Live. But yeah, the, the reason why you would do it that way is because if you if you were to have like all the splinters or all the broken parts as like pure geometry, you're going to add like a lot of it, right? Like it's become it's, it's going to become like really dense. Locations. Oh, I don't think I don't think I've set that up yet. Let me actually have a look here. Sorry about this, I just need to... I forgot to send out a notification. How silly. Do -do -do. Do -do. So... Just gonna send out quick. Going to do a few hero planks that have Splinter Geo, but that's only for uh, the few parts of the scene where the player can look at it. It would be right next to it. It's like one spot. Yeah, I mean, it also depends on how how dense you want to go and how realistic you want to go, right? Because if you're doing if you're doing like a bit more of a stylization where like the individual splinters are a bit more exaggerated, right? Like then you can get away with Geo, in my opinion, because you need way less of it. Right, but if you want to get like all the fine splinters, like it would be like on a realistic plank, you'll have to optimize it. Yeah, it kind of it kind of depends on what you're making with it, right? Like your what your approach is. <clears throat> Hi, Maddie. How are you doing? Let's see. Honestly, I don't really like how I set this up, but only, I hope that we only have to do this annoying part like once. Definitely taking your advice. Yeah, and if there's anything else that I can help with, Samantha, just uh, feel free to let me know. Sometimes, sometimes it's also just fun to play around with it, right? Like, sometimes it's fun to, like, experiment and try a couple of different workflows before you settle on one. So now the annoying part begins where I have to... I have to match... Uh, wait... I think this can all go right yeah because i did some work on it yesterday and this is this was basically the new version and this was the old version and then i had to link the old version to the new version so don't need that anymore there's two the same ones what quickly check that right that's not right Loving the modular kit so far. Yeah, these these rocks, I mean 
I'm not too convinced by the look of them just yet. I think it needs a little bit more, right? But I did like a quick pass on the texture yesterday. And I think the core of the kit is there. But I think I think we need to add um I don't know, we need to add more to it. So we're gonna we're gonna see how far we get with that today. So just gonna pick this one on the left instead. on this oh man that doesn't look stable at all do want it to look like a little bit a little bit realistic huh I might be better off A way of doing this. I don't know, there probably is, but <clears throat> making a massive scene like this for a portfolio um i'm good yeah i, I want to break that apart because don't do that uh first of all um but what is the studio's opinion if you use quixel mixer to make trim sheets is it seen as cheating no no the, the way that you have to look at it is um i'll give I'll, I'll give a more clear example right so let's say let's say you have a massive scene um, I don't know. Let's say, let's say you have a shot like this, right? You have a shot like this and you yourself didn't make any of the foliage. Then I think what the studio is going to do is just disregard like any skills that you might have related to foliage, right? So I think, I think it becomes like picking and choosing so in in your example here samantha um if you use quixel mixer to make trim sheets and you make all your trim sheets with quixel mixer then it's gonna i don't know i don't want to say like it's gonna cost you some points when it's gonna come to the texturing part of it right but that's what that's what it will translate to right um, but it depends, right? Because let's say, let's say you have like a couple of other props where you did make all the textures yourself, then you're going to regain those points as well. Um, so I would, I would also, I would always look at it in a way where, um, you kind of pick and choose what to focus on, right? Because let's say for, let's say for, um, like a ruin, like a ruined building in a forest, right? If you have no interest in doing foliage and if you have no interest or like you don't want to make foliage ever, you can just use mega scan foliage, but still still make the ruin like really look kick ass, right? And then people are instinctively going to know like, okay, like the, um, they didn't do the, the foliage themselves. So we're not going to hire them for a, for a, for a foliage role, but their ruins look kick ass, so we're gonna hire them for that potentially, right? Yeah, it's more about like um the, the way that I always approach like um my scenes, right? And this is not to say that this is like the guaranteed way to get in, right? So always take that with a grain of salt when I say something like this. Is um I focus on one skill with every piece that I did. And then I just try to build up like, like my portfolio that way, right? Uh, 
I am just gonna replace all these blocks. I do want to get some variation in there, so... <laughs> uh, be careful of that. Be careful of that, Samantha. That's, um, what did they call that? Like the sunken cost fallacy? Where you just keep on doing something because you've done so much of it before, right? Um, so it's up to you, right? Like, I don't... So with Quixel Mixer, I, that's why I also brought up the example of using foliage in your scene compared to... Um, like using mega scan foliage in your scene compared to doing it yourself, right? Because that's like a very black and white example. Whereas with... Whereas with Quixel Mixer, you're only taking a shortcut on the texturing part of it. But the, the trim sheet itself still needs to be planned out like correctly and needs to be like very well put together, right? For the textures to be applied onto it. So you're short uh you're shortcutting like one part of the process of making trim sheets. So it's not um just to clarify that it's not because you use Quixel Mixer that a company will think that you can't do trim sheets. Right? Just to kind of highlight that a little bit more. Because honestly, like usually what, what you do in the industry is there's other people going to be, be responsible for the stuff that you're not comfortable with. Right? That's usually the way that it works. So let's say, oh, I was, let's say I'm never, I've never been that comfortable with making unique assets or like hero assets, right? But I was really good in set dressing. Um, so I would, I would just set dress with like stuff that other people made for it, right? Hi, Andrea. Happy Friday, all. Happy Friday to you too, Andrea. Welcome back. Yeah, this uh, doesn't look. Fix it. We'll fix it. You gotta gotta push through the ugly phase. <laughs> I think we just have to make all the pieces match a bit more, right? Honestly, the amount of geo here doesn't look too great. Too great. I'm not too happy with that. Now that I look at it up close. Is it the same one? It's not. Okay. That looks a bit better. This is also a benefit now that we've done the textures, like we can push and pull, right? While retaining retaining the textures so that we can kind of make them like a little bit more valuable. Obviously, we want to keep that contained to like a certain degree, right? Because the more we start like pushing and pulling, we're actually changing like the, the visuals or like the density of the textures, right? So we don't want to push it too far because then we're going to introduce like a lot of stretching. But a little bit never hurt anyone. Also a great way to like stuff closer together as well. I'm gonna just steal some of these smaller bits that we kind of push in between it. Because you, you don't want to keep working with like the same big shapes over and over, right? Like you want to want to spice it up. You want to add some variation in there. Ah, 
afternoon things to contemplate. Yeah, sorry, sorry to push like contemplation on you on this beautiful Friday afternoon. <laughs> So what do we... Yeah, okay. Skies again. Because this is the end piece, right? So... I think what we... Um, what I might do... Replace this with a bigger chunk. These two things up. Because what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to trying to make this sort of like an end post, right? Oh. Forgot about one thing though, they're all instants at the moment, right? If I do adjustments to one, it's gonna be applied to like all of them. That's Man, that's annoying. Medieval chill time. Let's go, Sarah. Great to see you here, Sarah. Hope you're doing well. Oh, this this spiky bit is also. Kind of too much. Yeah. Oh, everyone's pouring in. Hi, Cairo. Hi, George. How are we all doing? Yeah, see, so if I, if I adjust that one. And I also don't want to break the instancing, really, because then that's going to be more annoying if I do updates to my original texture. So I'm kind of in between... In between two fires at the moment. Dude. And the reason why I'm also leaving this open I mean, you all know about this, right? Like, it's... I wanna... I wanna kinda keep it modular, right? So, where one part, like, really connects with the other. We're gonna... We're gonna have to keep that in mind. Because also, like, now we can immediately see that these three guys, like, are the exact same. So that means that I need to... Definitely replace one of these. Then also potentially that up a little bit. I think also the texturing will help a little bit once we do like a final pass on top of it. looks like mm. hey Scott how's it going why is soft selection on I don't need you Let's do that instead. Join them all together, make sure that the name is still correct. And then 
change to pivot. Now we just duplicate it over here. All right, feels like it's higher than before. What? There's only one, one way to find out. Ah, uh, wasn't higher. Okay. But I actually kind of like that it kind of goes up and then down again, so that's actually good. Yeah, the village is looking a little bit different, huh? <laughs> Gradually making progress. It kind of turned into like something very rural to something like really build up. Um, which I kind of like. I do still want to make like a more rural kind of village too. But uh, yeah, this is what we're going with for now. Looks beautiful. Thank you, Samantha. Appreciate that. Dude, this stone is floating. Do not like that. Let's make sure. We'll kind of we'll kind of put like another rock in here as well but for now i think i just want to match it up with these guys right the rest of it looks good this only needs to connect to one side because we're doing only the end anyway we're, we're good here. I think what I might do for the end piece is just grab like all... I don't know. I'm going to try, right? Like, um, just might grab all of these and make them a little bit more... Chunky. It's decent. There's some weird stuff happening here where we want to fill that in a bit more. Just random stuff, like sticking inside of each other. What? Sometimes, you know, I feel like I'm half asleep when I'm doing doing these streams and I look back at what I did in the last stream and I'm like, huh? What the hell? What was I thinking? I'm sure that everyone can relate at a certain degree, right? When you just have those moments when you're working on your project and you wake up the next day and you're like, I did, didn't make it better. I made it worse. What the hell happened? Only half asleep. What do you mean, Sarah? I can't believe it. Just throw me under the bus like that. Again. This is, uh... This is AI, Tim. You know? I'm actually not real. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. We're getting a little bit of heartache. But I think that's also because the... The normals in Blender look look different than they do in the game, so I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Okay, I'm gonna delete this guy. <laughs> I love it. People, people just taking naps during the streams. Hey, I still, I still appreciate you tuning in. You know, 
how you decide to spend that time, that's all fine by me. <laughs> yeah, but I'll I'll say that I wasn't expecting people to actually take a power nap while they're <laughs> looking at the stream. I can tell you that much. So relaxing. But after that, you make it super better. Hell yeah, that's the that's the right attitude, Samantha. I like it. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Good to see you back. Let's get this in. Let's get that updated. Yeah, the smaller shapes like add like a nice little breakup between all of it. It's looking quite nice. For now, right? Still a lot of work to do, but where we're going. So now let's replace this end piece. After that military thing. Oh, okay. Now I know who you are. Because sometimes it's tricky. Oh. Hello. Wrong button. Okay, so. This is the old one. So I'm gonna... Plonk this down. Join it all up. And then now we kind of we kind of need to see where the pivot point needs to needs to go, right? Because if we snap it like this, we're going to have like a little bit of a disconnect. So with the pivot point in place here, I'm just going to select all the meshes. I'm just going to scooch it right in where it kind of looks good. Right. And now that we know that works. We know the pivot placement of it. Um. Uh, oh, I see. Let's see. Wait, didn't we assign the right material to it? Oh, it's still it's still re-importing the wrong mesh. Let's uh let's see. So if we Um I'm looking straight past it. Open source location. Am I exporting this to? It's just going to... Oh, it's because... Oh, I forgot to remove the SM, of course. Hey Jay, how's it going? Oh, and now it's the wrong name. Oh my god. I'm just creating FBXs. No reason at all. Open walls end. Oh. I think I'm using... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's A-OK. -okay. That's the end piece. I think this one's going to be next.
apply to scale as well. How are you doing, Jay? How is your uh, stuff coming along? I saw that you posted like um, like an update, like a work in progress thread on the on the community. Stuff is looking good, man. Stuff is looking really nice. Just about to wrap up the work of the day, so I can back on to work on my power jack asset. Hell yeah! Sounds good. Oh, I think I think most of this is actually in in order, right? It's kind of the annoying part, but if I wanna if I wanna help myself in the future, this this part just needs to be done. Because now I'm basically linking like everything to these stones, right? And they are linked to like the, the low polys as well that I use for baking. So once I do an update to my textures, it should hopefully propagate to like everything else. Take a different one for that. I'm honestly not taking, not being too careful with which rocks that I'm picking at the moment, right? I'm, I'm trying to roughly match them with the shape, but it also doesn't have to be perfect. Because then we can go in and tweak it as well. Some nice bits of feedback from the peeps yesterday. Gotta get on that grind and get good at texturing. Hell yeah! Yeah, texturing... Never, I've never been really good at it. I'll be honest. I mean, you can probably see it on full display right now, even though these are not finished. <laughs> I feel like that's that's the that's a downside, right? Of like the the stuff that I'm interested in it is like I'm I'm decent in like a lot of skills, but I feel like I'm not really good at one particular one because I like focusing on like the big picture, you know. But I mean, also, I'm totally fine with that too, right? Because it's kind of like the... What is that? Like the... I guess the consequence of my choices, right? Or like the consequence of my focus. Or like following what I'm passionate about. So it's not that I'm... It's not, it's not that I'm... Um, I don't know. Negative about it either, right? Because this is the path... That I'm on. Uh, Sarah saying, what? Or it might also be World of Tanks. I don't know, Sarah. Are you asking about like a sponsorship? Such as pearls. <laughs> Let's fill the sky up as well. A little slanty rock. I 
think um try something so what if and that's that don't like that do not like Then we'll just have to steal some of these smaller ones again. Like, fill up some of the cracks. We want to make sure that we... some space and then I'm going to move some some smaller ones up here as well. Just squish them in there. Yeah, it breaks up the the bigger shapes really nicely though. So, yeah, okay, so I'm seeing, because I'm comparing these two, right, these are like the two straight walls, and I want to have them a little bit different, so I'm seeing that we're kind of using the same rocks over here, so I want to switch them up a little bit, let's see, it's a good, a good rock. And then... Maybe this one instead. Oh my god, this wall looks like it's slanting over a bit too much. Uh, I guess we just move some stuff over. this in the engine again first of all was it tile huh. wait it's probably better no nope. probably better if we test it this way do some smaller adjustments here So this is weird, right? Like I think I think if we wanted to have that one there, then we need to add that to the other piece of wall. But that means that it's not gonna tile with the other one again. So let's see if we can find a solution that works on this wall instead. Or maybe we have like a longer longer rock, maybe this one. Okay, and that fits with that one then. Uh, yeah, I 
think that cool. Purple. This guy is in. to make that one a little bit sharper as well because it looked a little bit too blobby don't want much blobbiness only speaking in industry approved terms right like blobbiness in industry standard terminology unfortunately blender can't be in that one My favorite industry standard term is greebly. Needs more greebles. I've said that before. I've heard other people say it before. Yeah. And I mean, especially if you're working on a sci fi game, I bet you hear that a lot. <laughs> I feel I feel almost like my if I were to look at that word, like it almost means <laughs> in a very weird way, it's just like random sci-fi noise that's what greebles mean in like a weird way right it's just um greeble panels are just like panels with like a lot of a lot of detail in them like a lot of piping or like a lot of lot of connections or a lot of like random stuff right but it's basically just like sci-fi noise like usually especially in the older games right it didn't have like any logic to it it was just it was just looking cool, right? Yeah, visual noise to complexify shapes. Oh my god, that's like a $10 sentence if I ever heard one, Cairo. <laughs> Nernies? Okay, that's a that's a that's a word that I haven't heard before. What? Oh, interesting. So a greeble is actually a part of like a plastic modeling kit to be applied to an original model as a detail element. Yeah, because that's how they did. That's how they did um, Star Wars, right? Like Star Wars is just like made from like um, plastic modeling stuff, especially the ships, right? They were just like from from bits of plastic modeling kits that were just like bashed together to make like really cool looking ships. Um. So, oh, I guess that's where Greebles come from then, right? First time the term appeared. Yeah. Yeah, I think they definitely popularized, popularized it, right? George is saying, my favorites are cheap and expensive. In, in what context, George? Like, oh, this looks cheap? Or... What do you mean? Because, yeah. Context. Performance. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. In terms of performance. Yeah, George. I mean, let's be real. I'm an environment artist. Like, I don't care about that, you know? Like... If if someone comes at me like, hey, this is expensive, I'm like, well, it's not it's not my job to make it performant, right? Isn't that your job? Come on. <laughs> I mean honestly I'm laughing about it, but that's usually the case though. <laughs> also, hi Antonio. I don't know if I said that before. Technical artists are crying right now. Hey, I mean Look, they shouldn't be crying because that's a whole reason why their job exists. Right? Isn't that a case? 
Because because if 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 environment artists were all technically minded and they could all do that do that stuff themselves, then we would have no need for technical artists anyway, right? So we're we're giving you jobs. We <laughs> we're job creators. That's what we are as environment artists. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, that's also not the only reason why technical artists exist, right? Um, their job is complex and very varied. Yeah, I'm doing good. Doing good. How are you doing? Thanks for asking, Antonio. Okay, so let's get this in. Yes, these wall sections. Yeah. I do I do like the look of them. Especially when you see them stacked up like this, right? I kinda I kinda like where it's going. I think we can we can easily make this like even more interesting if we have like couple of broken pieces and we have like some debris that we can scatter on the floor as well maybe add some smaller shapes near the bottom as well um yeah but a lot of potential here i like it especially because yeah it's, it's quite fun to make like little corners like this you know Our surface is like, it's not 100k polys. Oh? I don't know what that's in re reference to. Um, I'm very busy as, as you know, I've become a ghost. Oh. Well, I hope, I hope it's not too busy. Like, I hope you still get some rest as well. We can also replace these ugly stairs with some stuff that we can maybe make a staircase out of with this kit as well. Let's uh, let's finish these two sections up first. Bunk. I lose parts. Damn! Always having responses in the search emoji. Dad. Oh my god. Uh, yes, let's do this. I mean, but honestly, just. this right oh so this is this is kind of meant to be like an end i think yeah, so it would be also i'm talking about it in a way where i don't even know or like understand what the hell i was doing you know, I think this was supposed to be this, even though I made it myself, literally. Um. I really would like to work on a Lego game, which you play with digital Lego. Oh, you mean... Like... Minecraft, but then pay to play or like, no, what is it like, um, play to earn, right? I, I think that's going to be the future, but I don't think you're going to be on the development side then. <laughs> I mean, I think it's going to be the future. I think, I think there are going to be games out there like that, 
I don't think they're going to be the future, really, especially not in the long term. But yeah, there's going to be more opportunities for that in the in the future, because I don't think uh, don't underestimate like working on a Lego game is not like you're playing with Lego, right? Like you'll still be doing like a, bo a bunch of like tedious tasks as well. And it's also, it's also complex. Complex in its limitations from what I've heard from people. I mean, depends on which Lego game you're talking about, right? But. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what would be a fun game to work on? Because this is a weird realization, right? Like, um, I think your mindset when it comes to oh my god, I'm at the bottom of my screen. It's happening. I think at least for me, right, the realization that in the beginning you wanted to work on X game because you lost playing it, like, kind of goes counter what what it is to actually work on a game that you really enjoy um i'll explain that a little bit further right because my one of my favorite favorite game franchises is fallout right so before before i went into the game industry i was like i want to work on fallout 4 or fallout 5 right like i mean it was 4 at that time um but now even even without knowing anything about like the the engine or something like that right like just purely working on the game I would probably not do it because I know that it would partially turn my love for a game into my job. So to me, at least to me, right? Uh, I know I know people that do the opposite way as well, where they're like, hey, I love this game, so I want to work on this game. And that makes me even more passionate. I think for me, it was kind of like, nah, I'm fine playing the game right and like getting all my enjoyment out of it i don't necessarily need to work on something like that myself 76 oh, of course of course i summon david when we talk about fallout <laughs> hi david <laughs> no like even even the ones that i enjoyed playing right like fallout 3 or 4 like i really enjoy playing those and i always loved like the storytelling that they put into it but it's like i would not want to work on it because that would like at least partially like destroy destroy my enjoyment of playing the game right like sometimes it's i feel like it's nice to be like at least to a certain degree like ignorant of the stuff that goes into making a game so that it doesn't take away the enjoyment of playing the actual game, right? Does anyone have like an experience like that as well? Where, I don't know, maybe maybe some of you who have some experience in the industry where you're like, eh, my, my mindset compared to like what I went into the games industry with compared to what I learned now is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Andrea. That's that's a good way of putting it, like spoiling it for yourself, right? Um, yeah, that's that's probably the best way to put it, honestly. Um, it's it's not even because Sarah, you brought that up, right? But that's why that's why I wanted to say that it's not necessarily even about like the 
the engine or or like the the things like the programs that you get to work with and and how outdated they might or might not be right let's be real um but it's more about the seeing how the game has evolved and then maybe there's like decisions along the way that you would have enjoyed more but they weren't like really a good fit for the final product so they didn't make it in but you're still aware of like all the choices that have been made and like a vision of potentially you aligning you aligned with more than the actual end outcome and if you only get the end product in your hands at the end you don't have like all those additional burdens of knowing like the decisions that eventually didn't make it into the game. For example, right? That's just one factor. You know what it could have been. Yeah, exactly, Scott. Exactly. Uh, Samantha saying, I... I have that only with the platform I'm playing on. I can't play on my PC because I can't switch off, so I play Xbox. Oh, okay, yeah. I've never... Well, I've always had a console, right? Up until I had a PC, and then I never switched back, really. But I, I get what you're saying, though. Like, it's really... It's really hard... To... If you don't have, like, a set structure, right? Like, even, even for me, I was playing a game before I was doing the stream... But I knew that I had a stream at like one. So I know that that I needed to switch, right? Um But there's before before I had all the structure, like there was no reason for me to switch because I didn't have the structure in place, right? So I would if I started playing a game in the morning, I would just play games for like the entire day. And the opposite would happen as well, right? Like if I started working, I would probably work the entire day as well. Like there was no there was no switching off or like no no in between, like no balancing between the two. It was just like very very black and white, right? Like it was like either full on gaming or full on work. So yeah, I think I think that's actually like a good tip if you if you struggle with that, like try to disengage yourself from the place where you're usually working right like that was one of the biggest things that was given as advice for when you're working from home is have your place of work be separate from your place of relaxation so yeah makes total sense Jay is saying, nah, for me, I still want to eventually have a go at working on a Call of Duty Zombies map. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that's awesome, right? Like, if you have that passion, you should definitely chase it. 100%. I think it's a very personal thing, right? Because, like I said before, like, I know a lot of people that are like, no, no, this is what I want to do. This is why I wanted to join the industry. So I'm going to go at it, like, straight ahead, right? That's awesome, Jay. It's a good choice. I think those would be fun to work on. Even though I've never really... Never really played Call of Duty, right? But, like, the zombies mode in it, like, always looked really fun. It always reminds me of, like, a very old-school mentality of, like, games, right? Where it was just, like, more about the fun than, like, all the additional stuff that comes on top of games these days. For, for better and for worse, right? Mm -mm -mm. let's have a look in the chat here to do also i feel like i'd be less hyped about a game if i was working on it um sort of goes in the same same vein what, what andrea's saying as well right i have the fear that i might dislike gaming because i want to get into the industry um well it's, it's kind of different um i don't think i mean I'm not gonna say that it doesn't happen, right, Andrea? Um, but for me, it didn't. It made me. It just made me more passionate about games, but just in a different way. Not necessarily about like playing them as I did before, but like analyzing them, 
and like seeing what goes wrong and and what goes right and then going going deeper right because now it feels it feels stupid right but like once once the industry doors open you see behind the scenes and you get like a completely different understanding of what the actual world of game development is like right so and it's hard to switch that off right um Oh, yeah, and like Scott's saying, like, it can definitely ruin some level of immersion. Yeah, for example, when I'm playing horror games, like, I feel like I don't get as scared as I used to at some point because I know that it's just held together by, like, pieces of code and, like, character animation and all that kind of stuff, right? Like, the peak behind the veil is, is, is kind of, has kind of ruined that part of it for me. Yeah. Oh, oh, Scott. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh my God. Yeah, and also like this is actually a good point, right, Scott? So um, when you notice AI behavior a lot more, it can go good and bad, right? Because I remember, um, what was the game that I was playing? I mean, there's a lot of it, but like probably I didn't play this game myself, but from what I've seen from Redfall, right? That's like probably like a. a it's not, it's not honestly like a terrible example, but it's a bad example, right? Um, but then I also, I also knew like the restrictions that like games like Far Cry work within, right? Where they can only have like a set amount of AI on the screen at one point. And then you look at Assassin's Creed and they have literal hundreds of people on the screen at once. And it was just like, I saw that when I was playing um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I think. That's where I started with like the new, the new Assassin's Creeds, and just looking at the place and people doing their behavior and walking through the seats, and it was just like so amazing to see just the amount of stuff that was happening on the screen, and it was all simulated in real time, right? And it was just, it's inspirational, you know, like it's awesome to see that stuff because you know, like in the background, like hundreds. Well, tens or if not hundreds of people have worked together to make that single element of a game happen. And it's just... It, sometimes, yeah, you just... There's no other reaction than just looking at something and being, like, amazed. Where you can, where you can see or you just know that behind the scenes, like, the art and the technicalities and, like, the production and the budget, like, all just all of it like just aligned to make this game <laughs> nah that annoys me <laughs> oh yeah yeah well yes yeah well that's the <laughs> that's the flip side of that one again right yep because i remember asking the exact same thing when we were working on far cry for example yep Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I understand the sentiment. Oh my god. The Houdini artist or technical artist uh, from Spider-Man says that he doesn't like playing games, but he likes making games. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I do the same thing. Like, I love being creative. And I usually, most of the games that I play... I just use to get my creative juices flowing again to make games or like make environments in this case, right? Like I I like the the craft more than the consumption of it. So I can I can totally see that. I totally totally agree with it. Cuz I spend way more time doing doing like art or doing at least something art related compared to like playing games so for sure doesn't mean that i don't play games it's just yeah the balance between them is very very much aligned with the creation of it and like being creative 100 percent But yeah, I don't, I don't think that fear, to come back to, you, to what you were saying, right, Andrea, um, I have the fear that I might dislike gaming because I want to get into the industry. 
I, it's just going to be different. I don't think you're going to dislike gaming. I think you're just going to have like a different view on stuff. So I would say don't let that worry you too much. At least in my opinion. Uh, oh, I did already remove this guy, right? It's the broken down part. And now I need to not forget that I need to remove the stem from this guy. Jay is also saying when you get into the industry for environment art, you get the ability to always see that one rock that has been placed 20 times next to each other to make a cliff. Oh, I hope, I hope that we've gone past that point in a lot of cases, but you're definitely right. Like... Or tiding textures, right? Like, or seams on stuff. Or you're definitely gonna be, you're definitely gonna be very conscious about like all the stuff that. So I, I think this is what happens, right? Like, I think, I think what happens is that you're in the beginning when you when when you're not a game dev yourself, you're not conscious about all that stuff at all, or maybe a little bit, right? And then you become a dev yourself and you start noticing all these things and you're saying to yourself like oh my god i'm really gonna change like all of that stuff like i'm really gonna be like a better artist because of this right and i think step three what happens is once you get to the actual the actual end of a product you're gonna be making the exact same mistakes maybe in a different way but like exactly the same ones as you wanted to avoid in the beginning because there's just no time <laughs> i think that's usually the way that it goes it's like you have this idea of like oh, i'm gonna do better and then and then it's like oh shit i don't have time so uh quick 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 a couple stuff together because i only have one day on this thing and then i need to do the next thing <laughs> yeah on purpose exactly scott I know the seams everywhere in games it doesn't ruin it for me but it's funny yeah exactly like i'm also i don't care about seams right like seams don't ruin a game for me like the thing that ruins a game for me is a bad game like if it's like badly designed or like if the gameplay is not fun or if the systems are not engaging like that ruins a game for me right like if a uh, if there's a seam like i don't care you know like yeah, we all make mistakes. Also, even if you have all the time in the world, and but you're still making like an open world game, like um, let's say Cyberpunk, for example, right? But you have all the time in the world. I can guarantee you that there's still going to be issues with it that are visible. Just because you forget there's human error in it. Like, yeah, it's hard to keep like, the amount of stuff that needs to be done for a game, it's hard to keep track of, like, all the moving pieces at the same time. Art only ruins the game for me if it's just a horrible art style, but that's not common in my opinion. Yeah, like, I would... It's very, very personal, right? Like... But, like... Um, on a personal level, yeah, like art can definitely ruin a game, I think, right? Because people have their personal preferences, but I don't think, I don't think art can necessarily make a bad game. That makes sense. Like the art of a game, like can be like terrible, but like if the game is still fun, then people will still play it. Yeah, that also doesn't mean that art has nothing to add, right? Because I feel like if you really want to sell a game and you want to make it bigger, bigger and better, that's where art plays a big role, right? Like the art direction specifically. Like usually that's a selling point, 
right? This guy here, I think the last one. Yeah, that's a good question. Like what? I mean, I, I don't know. Is it a good question? I mean, it's an interesting question, right? But I, I think it's, I don't think you can think that art is bad, right? I think, I think art is just not aligned with your tastes because I'll give an example in my case, right? Like I'm, I'm very, I'm very sensitive to like the, the fonts that, that games use. And that's also why I always say that like Final Fantasy, I just could never play that game because the font. Sounds so stupid, but that's why I've never played a Final Fantasy game apart from one of them, I think. And it was always because I saw the menus and I was like, oh, I can't do this. And then I was out. And it's just, yeah, there, there's certain things, right? Like that are just like, no, nah, just can't deal with it. You know, like. The Gollum font. Oh, from the actual game? Oh my god, I've kind of just ignored that game. Cruelty Squad makes me want to die looking at it. Okay, I need to look this up then. Because I haven't heard about that at all. Now don't... I'm not going to put them on full blast either, right? But... Oh... <laughs> I can I can see what you're saying. But I mean that must be done on purpose, right? That is like It's a choice, just not a good one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think I totally agree with you, right, Scott? Like, I, I would never play that game because, like, just looking at it, like, makes my brain hurt. But in a weird way, I love that it exists because it's, like, a team just putting out, like, something weird, right? And it's just, like, yeah, this is what we do. Like, and that's what we wanted to do as a team. You know, screw it. Or maybe just one person in this case. I don't know. But I, I kind of admire, like, just the, the guts that it takes to spend like a decent chunk of your life just developing a game that looks intentionally like, hey, uh, graphic design is my passion. <laughs> oh my god. Hi, the apples. How's it going? Welcome to the chat. How are you doing? But yeah. Yeah, like that's what I like about it, right? But that also that that also is not gonna make me play your game, you know? Like I can appreciate like your uh your output, but yeah, that's not gonna make me play play game necessarily. Oh my god. I've never seen that game though. That looks that looks horrible. <laughs> Oh my god. That's so cursed. Uh, maybe this one? I feel like I picked this one a thousand times already. Okay, so this is like the end of the wall then. Good and you, your stream are perfect to work with. Oh, thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, man. But there, I, I feel like there's also like really interesting 
places where people are picking like really outdated uh, art styles, right? Like um, very pixelated stuff, like very simple stuff. And then they make horror games with it that are like really effective. I love that. I think, um, what is one of the developers? Um, so I'm watching, I'm watching people play those games, right? I think Jacksepticeye was playing, playing their games. And I think it's a kitty horror game, I think. Uh, and they make like a bunch of games with like really, really basic art styles, right? But because they're so basic, like they can also produce like a lot of them. And it's also not, not like a, not like a thing where like quantity, or at least from what I've seen, like quantity, like overcomes like, uh, like the quality of it, right? Like it's still, it's still nice. PSX R cell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's also what they play around with a lot. Because Yeah, I mean, what was the recent the recent thing that came out? Um I don't know. Oh, I think it was from the the law case from um or the lawsuit from Microsoft and um an Activision, right? Where the, the FTC is trying to block the deal going through. Like, there were, like, some pretty pretty terribly redacted documents in that that got revealed. Where they revealed that um, Horizon Zero Dawn um, with, I think it was Burning Shores, the new DLC that came out or something like that, um, had, like, a development team of 300 people and they had a development budget of 200 million right that's that's crazy just hearing that number and that's only the development budget right because usually when we're talking about like making a game and promoting it and all that kind of stuff like the marketing budget is usually double of that so yeah it's freaking nuts that games are so expensive and a lot of it has to do with like yeah we need to push the graphical fidelity up and up right the complexity of games like tangles into that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious where this is gonna go. I think I think studios are definitely gonna keep pushing for more and more realistic, right? Um But I think it's also I think I said this a couple times before, like where it's also gonna leave a lot of space. Um behind like them catching up with the realism of it it's gonna leave a lot of space for other people to riff on like earlier art styles right like the psx art style like a lot of a lot of indie games are doing that now and it's awesome right because they put their own spin on it um especially with the combination of 2d and 3d right like combining those two there's like a lot of stuff that can still be explored there it's great to see awesome okay so what's the name of this guy what do we name it Let's get that in here. Nice. Then I think... Did I not have like a stone wall somewhere? I think I might have removed it. Let's just pick a nice spot. No, oh, this one. It's not too bad. It's definitely a bit of a 
Bit of a misalignment happening there. These guys. Maybe we could potentially even like add to certain sections, right? that's a nice looking wall and then we'll we'll keep on we'll keep on pushing the textures Jesus. Hi, Bibu. How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. Natural was just barking at the neighbors again. But yeah, how are you doing? Um. So yeah, we just finished up this wall. I mean, finished. Like, we finished up the modules, right? And I think the modules are in a good place. I think what I'm going to do... Clean it up a little bit. So go... No, why doesn't my coffee work anymore? What are you doing? Huh. Okay, so we got our little kit over here, which is looking pretty good. Um, uh, what I am going to do, I don't know if we're going to do it now, but I'm, I'm going to add like more smaller stuff to it and then maybe put like a bunch of small stuff on the floor so that it's properly embedded into the terrain, right? Whenever we place it. But I think, I think this is a good spot to kind of switch to something else. Because I want to... I want to set dress the, the market a little bit and see how far we can get with the available stuff that we've made so far. So I don't, don't know where we're going to start, but I guess I'm just going to clear all this stuff out, make some room. So lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think. Either I'm doing it after stream, or maybe next stream I'm going to continue on the rocks, but I feel like I feel like jumping onto something different. A little bit of set dressing. Seeing as that was the plan anyway. Um. I think I think having this in the middle is a bit too busy. So just gonna just gonna see how this looks, right? Because I kinda like the look of that. Where you might have like a couple of market stalls here. And let's start dragging in some stuff.
how do I approach set dressing? Is there a certain philosophy? Um, I think the, the base that I always use is thinking about it in like a logical way or like role playing. So like imagining like, hey, if I'm... Let's imagine that I'm like a farmer coming into the town and then um, displaying my stuff on the market, right? Like I'll try to imagine like where I would put it, like what I would have with me. Um, how would I carry it from like place A to B? Um, like a lot of those things, right? Like I would think about. But we'll see. I'll try to explain it as I go along. I will first... I'm going to remove the mud because I'm going to do that first and make it pretty generic dirt. Move the water well as well. And remove this too. I'm just making some space really, right? Start there. Yeah, a lot of a lot of set dressing to me has a has a lot of stuff to do with just making sure that the foundations are correct first, right? As always. By like thinking like in this case it's like, oh, where's the market gonna be? Right? Like the market is usually at the cross section of like all the roads, right? Because as as a a town develops, like it would usually start with like a couple a couple of hovels, right? Like a couple of things next to each other. And then as it would grow, as there would be like maybe more trade from like the nearby settlements or something like that, they would have like a marketplace in the middle of the town. And then it would like go out and then you would have like these defensive perimeter that would be built at some point. And then you would probably have people that live inside of it. And then also the farmers and the peasants that live outside of it. Right. So there's a lot of layers to this already. Um, and then... Yeah, like I think I think in this case, I'm just gonna scatter some stuff around, right? And start like placing some of the assets that I've already made. So this is not really starting from scratch, really. Um got a pottery stall, got fish. Um also based on the location, I think we can have like a lot of fish stalls, right? And then that's where these guys come in, where they probably would have like fish drying. Um or at least fish that they're still preparing to be sold or something like that, right? Just get rid of all this mud here. So maybe... Maybe what we can do... Right, is have like a little, little fishing area here where there's like mostly fish... Fishmonger stuff. So if we just start... Like dotting these around a little bit and it's it's like the same thing as you're making like a like a complete level right or um or like an asset is you start with a block out and then you start you you start looking at like okay what are the proportions like what am i feeling about like the spacing of everything and you just keep building up upon it at least the way that I approach it. So I know that these are all the same at the moment, right? I don't think I have like a secondary one anyway. Oh, and then maybe what you... Oh, that would be interesting, maybe. Like... Um... So we've got like a whole bunch of barrels, right? But what if there's like... Because we want to display that these fish are getting cleaned, right? So the way that I'm looking at this is either people are fishing in the river themselves or there's like boats that come on here because they just went fishing on like the shores that are quite close by or something like that. So thinking about it logically then, like you would probably have a boat come in. It will drop off like all the fish. So there will probably be like more storage over here maybe like i don't know barrels of fish um 
like crates of fish too, right? And then some of them would be like gutted, some of them would be like hanging out to dry. Uh, some of them would probably be like stored in casks as well to be salted and then be transported to somewhere else as well. As like more of like a, a long term storage kind of thing. But even, even in that little section, we can already see that, okay, so there's probably going to be an area where there's going to be a section where people are going to be cleaning up those fish, right? So we definitely need like an area like that. So let's see. Maybe I'll have it as like a bit more of like an established kind of section. We'll have to adjust uh, the assets for that, but it's fine. Oh, you know what would be cool? So if they if they have like a lot of poles, um, let's see. Yeah, so if they have like a lot of rounded pillars, and there's like fish netting hanging between all of it. Right, to indicate that that's where they're hanging all their fish. And then you have some areas like this as well. We try and make it like a bit more organized. I will have to get rid of these poles, right? Like, if you want to make some sort of pier over here, like, we'll have to get rid of those. Yeah, so this is, like, the, the fish cleaning area. Maybe there's, like, a couple of buckets there as well. Right, so that would be <clears throat> like a little pier area. And then maybe we could think in, right? Because there's a lot of empty space here. Maybe to break it up a little bit. We'd have something more like this. It's a little bit more organic and it breaks up like all the structured space, right? And then we would have like a lot of fish hanging from here. So with like, you know, a couple buckets next to it. The apples, why are you working on this project for a masterclass, a game? Uh, no, just for my personal personal self. And I'm probably going to sell it as like an asset pack in the end. Um, but mostly this is just fun. So this is, yeah, mostly focused on that. Uh, yes, so... I'm going to see. I want to have the, the market stalls more over here so maybe would be cool if you had a fish drying rack so it's like a large fish can be brought in and be and is processed yeah yeah that would be a cool idea maybe maybe we can do something more with these with these poles right but it would hang something from it potentially and then this is where the, the smaller fish would dry right i'm there's currently nothing here now, but I'm imagining these be chock full of like little fish that you just hang. Um, actually, I mean, I have fish, but. Yeah, they're, oh my God, they're so outdated though. 
Anyway, fly through the pain. Let's turn that off. Right, so this would be like chock full of fish. Seems like a pretty quick mesh you can get from your current kit. Can give you a pick if you like. Yeah, sure. Have it lying around anyway. So I have like a bunch of fish hanging here. Scale some up, scale some down. And then I'm just gonna be a little bit late. I'm just gonna Add this all to a group. And then just do something like this. guess uh, let's see what makes sense right if we can move this up a little bit they would have more space for the fish we can add even like another section of these guys thank you jay i'll probably have a look at it after the stream though um i'll, I'll check it out right now Let's check it out real quick. Oh, yeah, one of those. Okay. Yeah, that could be cool. It's a great suggestion, man. Thank you so much. I get that in there for the for the next time then. Yeah, and then maybe. Yeah, I'm just placing some stuff down, right? I know that this is not perfect yet. I kind of I kind of want to have an indication that there's also fish hanging from the actual thingy here. And then we can kind of that's why i wanted to remove like all of this right like all of the all of the mud because right now this is the moment where you can kind of start adding hints of like oh there's going to be lots of oh one there's going to be lots of water here right so that's going to be very very watery you can kind of indicate that people move away from the shore but it kind of gets like less muddy how do they go away and it becomes like more grassy or something like that because that's also a nice way of breaking it up
Right, so then we have like the, the fishing area over here. Um, let's see. It would be cool to have like one of those larger, like, drying racks that Jay just sent me over here. Be freaking awesome. So I'm just going to add like a bunch of like quick placeholders in. We scale them up a little bit. It's going to be replaced anyway. Just even something like this. We have here C. So I do want to add some variation here as well on the buildings as much as possible. So C. That one is perfect here, and maybe we'll make this like a bigger fish stall, right? I think I think we might do we might need to make these ones taller, I think. Because I think if we put them down into the floor. Especially because the floor is tapering down. Yeah, that's not going to be enough space for us to, to go into. Um, so what we could do... No. Flatten this out a little bit. Smooth it out a bit again. No, not good enough. Wait, do they even align? No. So... It's actually C, right? Let's get some context going. Yeah, we need to we need to make that higher. Maybe we'll make the the angle a little bit less steep. Oh, oh. they're in here in the other scene. But then we can we can start dressing this up as well. Buckets. I think we gotta get some tables in here. Let's pick a light table. Yeah, now we can definitely see that this is way too, way too small.
And I think also. Let's change uh, decals on here as, as well. Okay. I don't. happening here I turn that off okay because I just want the decals like no dirt or anything like that on them we'll switch them to be lighter a bit too light A slight variation in there. It does look good. Yeah, in the meantime, mm, I think it might be in the other scene. Yes. So this is a more permanent stall, right? <clears throat> because this is actually attached to the building. So I'm going to assume that people also have like more permanent things inside of the stall itself. Oh, let's maybe use some of our new, well, if they're not deleted. I think the last time they did a little bag clutter props yeah there we go okay More for animals. I think then we just begin building up the market itself, right? So we've got some furniture. Let's get some chairs in here. We can actually sit. Uh, 
What did I use again? I think one of these, right? Like if we kind of do this thing where we stack them up a little bit. Those are chunky boys. Chunky fish. So you can see, this is like, I don't know, it's such a stupid thing to say, but probably, but like, if I'm trying to stack up like a lot of these, what I'll do is try to work with like the biggest the biggest amount of them right and then tweak it or clean it up after if needed so that means as i started with four so i have like a section of three and then i'll try to like zigzag stack him right and maybe even just like rotate the odd guy out silver guy spin the same thing here In that way you can get some quick variation it's a little tricks so I'm gonna just duplicate that over here and then I'm just gonna delete a couple of these Maybe what we'll do is we'll we'll slap the clean variation as well on these. It's like a little bit cleaner. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to remove one of these. Maybe even move it over here. I want to showcase that they that they chop up the fish as well, right? Yeah, that would be cool. We have like a couple sections. <clears throat> hey, Sebastian! Thank you so much. How are you doing? A, that's a chunky boy. We'll see because I have like a, a couple of sections here as well. Fish, I have like a cut tail. I think all of this needs to be scaled down though. Hey, Jessic! Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Thank you for subscribing. Appreciate that. So 
slight deviation, but I want to get some light in here. So I'm going to pick up a lantern, see what his light is. Move it into place. Oh, you know what would be cool? If we have like a hanging version of this as well, where we can just hang it on like certain elements. Interesting. Just leaving that there for future Tim to solve. Um. Yes. So what else do we have? We have shelves as well. We could use. I don't know why they would be useful or what we're going to put in it, but I think it's a cool little thing to use. Tubs here as well. Great. Maybe we can... Oh, that would be cool if we can store some fish in it. Maybe make like a little bit more of an organic stack as well. Maybe something like this would be good for like fish guts, you know? It's like leftovers of it. these as well so we have like the cut off tails and like the heads in there um what was it again okay, i'm gonna try something completely forgot how to do it but i'm gonna try it anyway so if we First of all, I'm going to scale all of this down a little bit. Right, and then simulate physics. And then... Ooh. Simulate? <laughs> yeah, maybe I need to fix the collision on the thing first, huh? Um, okay, let's do that first. So, uh, show me the collision of this piece. Yes, that's why. Okay. I don't know. I'm just going to set it to 20, see what it spits out. That's looking good. Like that. Okay. We're going to try that again. Select all of it. Right. Let's do that again. Blah. And I think then, what do we do? Like, keep simulation changes. K. Okay. And then now pre press K. And we stop it. That's where their new position is. I love that little trick. Um... What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to go a little bit crazy. So this is like a really great trick for if you want to just like stack stuff up like really quickly, especially for some random stuff like this, right? 
Let's see, can I do it in a group? Select those two and then simulate physics. Simulate it again. Look, we, we lost a whole bunch of stuff down here, but hey, we're just gonna ignore that, huh? Wonder. Hey, that's cool. Little tip of the day for me. Hell yeah. Gonna gonna play around with this a little bit, right? Let's see. Yeah. Oh. We're missing one, but I mean we can delete that one. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? And we're just playing around with this, right? Just having fun. Date this. Keep it like that. Yes, press K. It's good. Where's the one thing that was missing here? Oh, it's just gone. Okay. <gasps> no, it's there. Um, let's see. Okay, if I then ungroup all of this. Select you. Delete. There we go. Next. So yeah, that's just a cool handy tip, right? Like if you want to scatter stuff around like this, like really easy to do it. Want to select any of this though? Do not want to select you either. Group all this and still pick something else up. What else did it pick up? Oh. What? So confusing, right? Because I'm trying to figure out like what it is picking up right now. There's something in my collection, or, like in my current selection, that is just picking all that stuff up too. Um, filter. I set. Selected. Only selected. Go. Huh? There's nothing in there? Why is it being so freaking awkward then? I don't get it. I honestly don't know what's in it. 
a bug or something? Why is my selection so big? Hmm. Oh, my disco RVT lights. Hey. Okay, I guess we don't group it. I'm going to try another way then. If grouping doesn't work. I am just going to make sure that everything in here is correct. It's a fish head. I'm just going to make that uh, level instance instead. Enemy convention that we're sticking by. Drop. Fish. Um. Bub. Let's see. It still does it though. Like why? So what if we... Yeah, okay. So it was just a bug then. Cool. Now, this is gonna be offset. Cool. Thanks, Unreal. Pretty really helpful. Okay, that's solved anyway. There. I'll take a bunch of fishies. I think what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna. Oh my god. That's like a dirt cutting board. What happened with that? Let's make it clean. Those fish are so cute. Thank you. They have been in this project for such a long time. I don't know. Let me see. I don't know if I can actually tell. Is there a date on this somewhere? Be curious to know. imported but they i think i think it might be over two years that they've been in this project <laughs> ridiculous amount but they were pretty fun to make honestly pretty fun to make even though i need to do some tweaks to them still they were fun I mean, everything in this project needs tweaking, so that's no surprise. Okay. I don't have a knife. That's an issue, huh? That is an issue. So that would be one to note down. Nice. Some, some plates next to it, so you can kind of get the idea that they're processing the fish.
I also think that the more that I'm looking at it, like a salmon is not really <laughs> gonna be too stereotypical for these parts, huh? this side we're gonna do something different also extend some of those awnings if I can find them. It's these guys. Let's plonk a scale ref down. Yeah, so that we can actually see the actual issue that's already happening. And then what we want to do. Send these guys out. That there as well. The actual one. This isn't softened up. Weird. Building attachment number three. Yes, okay. Okay. Where did it go to? Oh, and this goes to the F drive still, I think, yeah. Yep. That gives us a little bit more space to work with, right? That's way better. And we just need to bake it again. Hmm. One set set up. Good. Gonna see if we can do something interesting across the street. Oh, I uh, totally forgot to to ask you as well, uh, the apples. What are you working on? So, and also, Sebastian, how are you doing? Kind of got too involved in making my fish market stall.
I'm also going to grab a little bit of water as well. So be right back. Wow, freshness. Let's go. Got to stay hydrated. I'd rather think about the logic of all this, right? So have people coming along here going to the docks people are gonna come around grab some fish it's gonna be an interesting choke point let's walk around for a bit Oh my god. <laughs> my fish has just exploded. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that. Just... Blonk. Okay, so... Important, important to note, make sure that you don't keep your simulation changes or like your simulation thing is on if you're done with them. Um, wait, why can't I say like... All of them at the same time. Okay. Keep. Uh, simulate physics. Nope. Don't want that. Thank you. Okay, now. Let's walk around. Let's walk around in peace this time, huh? Not get freaking attacked by um, fish heads. Jesus. Yeah, I do like that little area. Do like it. I think the only thing that's kind of annoying me right now is just the color of the fabric, right? Um... That's going to change it for all of them, but... Didn't we do a mask for this at some point? Or did I remove that? Remember. Fish explosions, let's go! Um, yeah, but... We'll probably have to set up, like, new material instances for these as well. Yeah, everything is kind of brownish, you know?
But we'll we'll figure it out. I think I think a couple of variations of this cloth are gonna do a lot of work. And I think also um some signage could be very helpful too. Could be very helpful indeed. Add some grass back as well. Okay, remember all the way in the beginning that I told you that I'm going to approach it or that you should approach it in a way where you do the block out first and then you get the big shapes in first. Look at what we did. Uh, the market is still empty. I basically focused on like one stall in particular. So yeah. <laughs> I'm very good at listening to my own advice, huh? <laughs> but I feel, I feel that's also nothing new, right? You know how I work. It's very chaotic by now. So you're probably used to this. Probably used to the chaos that is my life. Or like my my personal work at least. Um, okay. So let's try to listen to, to my own advice just a little bit. Get a whole bunch of stuff set up. No fish. A lot of herbs. Potatoes. Got pottery. What else do we have? Carpenter, we got a saw pit. I'm just gonna add all these clutter things as well. Okay. Clutter panels. Clutter. Oh, just add all of them. No, do not push them underneath the ground, please. Okay. And we're going to see. So this is probably going to be like a more, more of a unique stall again. Right? Actually, because I like this little nook. I don't want to really destroy that. Kind of, kind of want to do something like this. You still have the entrance here, right? And then this would be like a separate market stall. Let's do the same thing that we did before. Just grab some tables. What did I think about it? Like it would be cool to have like, I don't know, like a little forge here or something like that instead of like over here. Seems like it would be like the perfect place for it, no? Like the more that I look at it. And then maybe, I don't know, this is something different. Yeah, maybe we could small forge that in here. Maybe maybe it's more like a, a temporary kinda kinda thing. And then the big stuff you get you get done by like the actual proper blacksmith. And this is like I don't know. Blacksmith apprentice or something like that, or like a traveling one. Not sure. Let's 
Move it over here. We're gonna kind of close this down a little bit. Maybe not with rocks though. I don't know. Not feeling this. Could work. I don't know. Like I think it, the organicness of it feels interesting, but maybe it feels too heavy-handed for what it's doing. This would be forge. So I'm just gonna add like a little little light over here. That to 400 or something like that. Add two. Nice. And then maybe the market is just like in the middle of it. We have the stalls kind of like back to back. Throwing some stuff all over the place. Definitely don't want that near the fire, so that's probably going to be somewhere over here or something. I do want a little bit more than just like the two stalls in the middle though. A bit weird. I'm gonna place like a bunch of them and then we can just see how that looks and feels. Because you'll probably have people coming from here, like going to the, the market, right? So what if we have something like that, where it kind of invites you in to follow the curve a little bit? Right, and then it opens some space. Or stuff that we can put in here, maybe?
Unblock the road, though. So main road is still running through here, right? So we don't want to want to block that. Yeah, I like the forge being here. Like it, like a small one for sure. I like the vibe that that brings. I think maybe what we'll do is to have something like this where it kind of like caps off the market because the, the open-endedness of it was a little bit weird. Mm. Oh, shit. This isn't my intent. Didn't realize that I had that selected still. We'll definitely do an update to like these market stalls because they they would definitely require one. I think it's already. Nice. And we'll we'll definitely make like a couple of updates too. Or a couple more variations for sure. When it comes to these market stalls. Kind of have the person coming out of the back here. This is left open because that's like an entryway to it. Or at least it should be small enough that it's noticeable, right? And then maybe the back of these buildings is used for just like, I don't know, putting away storage, maybe some storage carts or something like that. Right, so this is like a traveling merchant coming in with his cart, setting up like the stall in the morning. <clears throat> and then basically packing it in for the rest of the night again. Oh, I've been missing out on a couple of messages. I didn't see that you called them chunky, Samantha. <laughs> I had it set to top chat and for some reason so chunky it didn't make it in top chat. How dare it. So, um... Abirayid, hi Tim, almost missed the stream. Oh, it's good to have you here. Mm. I think. Just kind of, kind of trying to see where we can fit in like more marketplace stuff, right? Like more market related stuff because I like when it blocks like people's houses because that's what you always almost would see in like current day markets as well, right? Where if it's like a really busy market, it would almost like obscure like the civilian side of things. I'm also zoning out while working, so I leave just these little small comments. Oh, I love them. 
little flavor text. <laughs> These little herbs, which I'm still, I'm still really proud of. Like, well, well, happy with, I'll say. I, I like how they came out. Yeah! Cool, right? And it's just a little plane with a little palm on it. They are nice. It's just a presentation, right? Like, I can make this so much better now with all the stuff that I've made. Like, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun to, like, basically take all the stuff that I've made since I've made these market cards and do, like, a version 2.0. Because the market cards, like the market stalls themselves, oh my god, they kind of look really basic, huh? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have so much fun making them pretty. I think we need one of these with like a bunch of bags on it as well. Let me, let me actually just make one. Of the baskets also? Yeah. Yeah, like that's the thing. I've 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 gotten to this place where I have so much stuff that it's gonna be so much fun to like make new combinations with all the things that I've made, right? Like so much fun to play around with it. For example, like this stuff, we can then just add in like a bunch of bags, right? Like uh, oh, maybe a clock case could go in there as well. What did I call them? Bags. Open one. These guys. A full one. Scale them a little bit up and down. Here we rotate them. And also now, like a lot of the assets are kind of like in an in-between stage, right? So like these bags, if we start adding like additional layers on top of it. So nice. So good. All about small little steps. And let's clean this guy up as well. Dunk. The decals. Oh no! It's definitely not clean. It's like another variation. The green merchant needs a little cat sleeping on the car on those backs to keep the mice away when he's not napping. Oh my god, that's an awesome idea. Um, also, scope creep alert. <laughs> A cat with animations and all that stuff. Oh my god, what are you doing to me, Samantha? Oh my god, what happened with the grass? What? What? Oh my god, grass is fucked. <laughs> uh oh, can I go back? Please. Please. Oh my god, what happened with the grass? No. Well, okay. Uh the grass is kinda fucked. What are we gonna do against it?
Did it? Where are those textures even stored? It's in the asset, right? Isn't it? What? This is all fine, though. Oh, no. Well, I've got no clue how to fix that, so I guess we're going to find out today. Yeah, so this only holds the, the grass scattering, right? Yeah, so this doesn't actually... Nah, I probably lose too much when I do that. Uh, it's a great suggestion, though. Um... But I, I haven't saved in quite a while. I know why it why it happened. At least I think I do. Like I dragged I dragged the wrong material onto the landscape and then it flashed for a little bit. I control Z and then still remain on these. So Yeah, let me try something. Let me try a uh, refresh. Here we go. so weird that's so weird i have to do it on like every s <laughs> sometimes you know <laughs> yeah game dev stuff happening okay okay i'm just gonna pretend like that he didn't even happen Okay. Uh, so those are automatically spawned based on the material that I paint on the landscape. Because LODs are something different, right? Like um, LODs, like they they make your geometry cheaper over the distance that you're away from it. Um, but this is something different. This is just where I paint stuff. Right, let's say, go to an area here. And I say, uh, mud. It will like, well, if I do tool strength of one, it will like only add grass where there is actual grass, right? And I think I got like a layer of dirt as well that has some stones that it will scatter on it. So those stones are scattered on it as well automatically. Then I have this one as well for the for the forest ground where it will just basically scatter like a whole bunch of stuff on top of it, like automatically. Really, really useful. Let's do a quick painty paint on the marketplace. Andrea saying that's such an adorable idea with the cat sleeping next to it. Love it. Love it. Some patches. And go over it with a little bit of dirt to mark the paths, right? And like where people. So, what I'm basically doing is grass is the base, right? And then I'm imagining where people would actually traverse like a bunch of times. And there I'll, I'll paint some dirt, right? So, for example, there's going to be people working in here. So, this is probably going to be like mostly dirt. Um,. Same here, same to this door. Maybe these have been there for a while, so the grass is still there. Maybe these stalls are a little bit more permanent, so they will remain there as well. And then to add like additional detail, I can then go in and like with a maybe a little softer brush, please. I can then go in and like paint some variation onto that dirt, right? Like to 
get like certain spots of, of uh, mud or something like that. Doesn't always have to be like full on because I like the patches that are like slightly muddy. It's all about just making it look interesting, right? Let's walk around a little bit. Just check it out. Bowler as well. Oh, can I? Yes, there we go. Lighting is super boring at the moment, but... Sort of working lighting, right? Need to walk uh, walk around a little bit in real life. Been stuck on a chair for too long. Go and stretch your legs, Samantha. Take care of those legs. Because, yeah. You're going to be sitting on them for, like... A lot of your life. Especially if you're doing game dev. So take care of them. Okay, so the marketplace is there. Got like a little fishery going on. I think this is gonna be a nice place for like tannery as well. Like um like a sun drying place, right? And then maybe I don't know, maybe maybe what could be cool is that we have like a little tannery place over here. Like on the outskirts of town instead of the building. Be interesting because I don't I don't really like this building. Want to make some coffee and stretch legs? Do it. Yeah, I think I think this could be like a good place for like a little tannery because I was having I was thinking about having a tannery here, but usually that smells so bad that you want to keep it like on the outskirts of town. Maybe maybe we'll put something there. Then you have like an archery place. This is like the, the mansion, right? Or like the what is it? Like the the lord that lives here. Also, where the water well is very important. Then you have like the proper blacksmith. You have the local blacksmith. You have like the wood, the wood store over there. Yeah, starting to make sense. What if that area had a chicken coop or something? I think... Oh, you mean... You mean the area on the left here? Andrea. I think, um... Yeah, we could, we could definitely add something there. Like, um... I had one here before, but then I replaced the building, so I don't even think we have a chicken coop in the city anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, could be a good idea. It's probably going to be like a little bit more rural, right? You wouldn't really expect to see chickens in the middle of the city. Oh, um, let's see, right? Not the chicken coop, anyway. Might as well just chuck it in there for shits and giggles. Little chicken coop. Mm. Um, what was I thinking? Yes, I. Uh, what I want to do 
is I wanna... Next render actor is what I want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start marking these areas a little bit. That's like the tanning area. So this is like um, fishmongers. Um, processing. You have like the, the marketplace here. I think this is also going to keep me more consistent over time as well, because sometimes I work on on this for like long stretches and sometimes it's like very time dependent, right? So have the marketplace here and it's also going to help me be like a little bit more um, distinct. That's the Lord's Manor. So this is all just like parts of part of like the Lord's Manor, because this this is the stupid stuff, right? Like if this is the Lord's Manor, like why is there like a staircase going into this house, like from the outside? It should probably be on the inside, right? Um, that's the sort of stuff that's going to be like very apparent to me. Um, and then also, well, maybe this could make sense. Like why is the blacksmith attached to like the Lord's Manor, right? But maybe the blacksmith is still like important. Um, so yeah, maybe it makes more sense to have the Lord's Matter up here. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but you don't want it on the outskirts of time either, right? Like the Lord's Matter should be like the most, most inner, inner bit of the city. I feel. And this is like the archery range. Um, those are the carpenters. Because, yeah, you see, like, um, I've placed down, like, a bunch of random buildings here, but they don't have a purpose yet. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna just have buildings that are just, like, for, for people, like, normal people, right? Um, but I think if we focus on making things more distinct, then they can actually have their own separate feeling. Whereas this, this little garden here, and then these, these buildings build up next to it, like, it's kind of messy at the moment. They don't really feel like they have a consistent purpose yet. So yeah. It would be good if we can over time clear that out. It's the blacksmith with the archery range. Marcus Place, the Lord's Banner, Tanning, Fishmongers. What storage? There's also gonna be like um, a place where they can drink, right? Like a pub? Pub or an inn or something like that? Whatever the equivalent was. Maybe that's this building here. That has like a very unique vibe to it. Maybe that's like the Tanner's Inn. Or something like that. Right? Because it's next to the tannery. And then we can make like a nice sign on the outside. Says the Tanner's Inn. Be cool. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to re re jig some stuff then, right? And make it more logical.
Virait is saying, I went to a nearby forest abandoned quarry today um, after working on a tree generator for the last 10 days and I'm really starting to notice fine distinctions in the trees around me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they all have their own little patterns and like the the way that the, that the, the structure of the branches work. Like, it's very interesting stuff. It's cool that you're diving into it so deep, man. Like, the, the last update that you shared was looking really awesome. Great stuff. to figure out some of the places. This den is also almost like... Bookyard. Or like, Dockyard is not the right word for it, but like, it's almost like Admiral's office. It's not an Admiral specifically, but like Seafarer's office or something like that, where, where people can check in and like get paid for like what they bring in in terms of fish. Um... Because an admiral makes it sound like really fancy, but it's not, right? But I'm just going to put it down there anyway. Oh, it's still on selected only. And then we'll make sure that his actor is hidden in game. And then we can kind of toggle it on and off. It's kind of nice. Because, yeah, from, from the looks the looks of it like we would almost already need like a uh what would you call it like a security office or like where where the guards like the, the barracks is probably a better way of saying it right? barracks i mean and the exercise that i'm doing now is is going to give us, like, again, like, a better indication of what the different areas are going to be. And, like, maybe if we can make them even more visually distinct from each other, right? Like, the guards' barracks, if we have, like, I don't know, an emblem with a shield on the outside. Or maybe, um, yeah, maybe some other stuff, right? That we can set dress it in a particular way to make it stand out more from the other stuff. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, the music is so nice and calm and yeah, it too. I do need to go on the lookout and add more different songs to it because I'm starting to recognize the playlist. <laughs> Which manner would be nice to have it bigger and taller than nearby buildings. Bigger for sure. I think I think the wall around it needs to be more pronounced, right? Because the wall is like the most important feature of it, where it kind of needs to stand stand apart from the rest of it. Um I think the way that they <sighs> 
it's kind of tricky, right? Because like in in a, in a in a bigger city, you would probably expect it to be like a castle, right? Let's be honest. Like that's what you probably would expect. But this is kind of like the in between. Like it's the awkward phase before it becomes a real castle, right? That's kind of how it feels to me right now. Um, yeah, it's a good idea to make it a bit more visually impressive, right? Compared to the other buildings around it. And we can achieve it in a lot of ways. I'm thinking that maybe it could be cool to have more uh, buildings that have wooden tiles on the roof. And then the most important buildings, they have like actual, actual tile on the roof. That's like one way to make it like even more visually distinct. Let's see. Let's check it by night. Oh, these are all casting shadows, I think. Yes. It's better. Oh my god, the foggy preset is so crazy. I need to like really work on the lighting because lighting is not too great at the moment. I need to maybe talk to some uh, lighting experts. Maybe they can maybe they can help me out a little bit. Pretty harsh at the moment. Yeah, I'm honestly pretty happy to have these walls done because those walls have been such a pain in my ass for the longest time. I was always, I'm gonna be honest, like always so uncomfortable with like tackling them. So I'm kind of happy that the bakes are done. Uh, we kind of have a good a good look for them now, even though the textures need to be improved. Like the, the majority of it is done, and we have a, a really nice kit to work with now. That's awesome. Go up here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I thought I fixed these collisions. Apparently not. Whoa! Spaz.
Check those jumping moves. Exactly. Especially those spazzing moves, you know? Uh... Sometimes it's good to just take in the sights, you know? Be proud of the work that you've done. I mean, I'm happy with it so far. Even though I'm seeing, like, a lot of things that need to be improved, right? Like, I like... Like the current... Current look of it. Ooh. Unintentional slow panning move. Because I have joystick drift. <laughs> In my 360 controller. I'm also so surprised that the ground looks so good without having like any anything going for it really, right? Like it doesn't have like any any like geometric depth. It's just flat. Yeah. Pom works so nice on it. Well it's not even pom, I think. It's just the height. I like the normal. Yeah, it's not even pom. I think I Removed it. Cool stuff. Even though it's my own project. I think... I think I'm going to leave it here. A little bit of a shorter one compared to the last one. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good moment to stop. Um, I'm kind of losing a little bit of steam as well, so I think it's nice to to kind of round it off here. Um, I appreciate I should I appreciate everyone that's been here today. Uh, thank you so much for the good chats. Hope you enjoyed the chill vibes, and then we'll um, we'll continue this next week. Um, I got no clue what we're gonna do next week, um, but I'll, I might pick up here and there um like after the stream it depends on how busy i get and we'll see we'll see what we'll do next week no clue but yeah again thank you so much for being here and yeah like samantha says in the chat have a great weekend everyone and uh stay creative see you next time